Will Pampered Chef's brilliance line shine in your kitchen? Let's find out! What's up guys? Welcome to the Kuba Kitchen Journey and we are here with Pampered Chef's brand new brilliance line of non-stick cookware. Now this is a pure non-stick play for Pampered Chef so it's not like the signature selection that has the removable handles and you can use metal utensils and it's not like the non-stick stainless steel. This is a non-stick pure play for Pampered Chef. This set is going to come with several different pieces. It comes with the 8.5 inch skillet. We don't have that one. It also comes with the 10 inch skillet. It comes with the two quart skillet, which has a lid. It comes with the four quart skillet that has a lid. It comes with the five quart saute pan. Woohoo! Let's make noise. It of course also has a lid. And then it comes with the Goliath, that is the eight quart stock pot. Now the prices on these in that order is the 8.5 is going to be $65. The 10 inch is going to be $95. The two quart is going to come in at 110. The four quart is going to come in at 145. The five quart saucepan is 165, and the eight quart behemoth is coming in at 185 dollars. Pampered Chef does also have a couple different sets. You can get a five piece set that's going to come with the 8.5 inch pan. It's going to come with the four quart. Uh, the four quart pot and the five quart saucepan and that's going to come in at $375. They also have a deal where you can get the two skillets at the same time. So the 8.5 and the 10 inch skillet together. The price for that is actually the same as if you were to buy them individually. The benefit is if you buy it at half off or you get a 60% off deal, um, then you can use that and you won't have to use it on two different things. So that's the deal there. So let's go ahead and talk about a little bit about what Pampered Chef has to say about these pants. For starters, this guy does come with an eight layer uh, construction and that means there's eight different layers that are put into this that all serve different purposes. The first is that it comes with an aluminum core and so that is uh, throughout the entire pan there's an aluminum core and what is great for aluminum is that it's very reactive metal. That means it heats up very fast, the heat will transfer very quickly all throughout the pan which is a very good thing to have in a pan. The problem with aluminum is that it dissipates as quickly as it heats up. So there's also two layers of adenized aluminum in here that is twice as strong as steel and has some of that density in that properties that allow the pan to retain heat. So there's two layers of that and then there's five total layers of non-stick coating. So there's going to be three layers on the inside and there's going to be two layers on the outside and that's going to make up your layers of the pan. There's also an aluminum disc on the bottom underneath what you're seeing right here and again that is just to allow this pan to heat up very very quickly. What you're seeing here on the bottom is a stainless steel cap and what that means is that this can actually be used on induction cookware. A lot of people have moved to induction. They say that it's like having an electric stove that says heats up as quickly as gas. I don't know. I've never used it, but I know that you can use this on induction cooktops, which is really, really cool. The pots and pans are going to be safe up to 480 degrees. You can put them inside of the oven as well, and of course you can use them on your cooktop. The lids for these are safe up to 400 degrees, and so if you're basting something where you make it on the stove, you, you cook it on the stove and then you want to finish it in the oven, you can use the lid in there. These are non-PFOA, and that means that they are a safe non-stick coating. They don't have uh, the same chemicals that were used in Teflon in years past, um, so they're non-PFA, and they are made in Thailand. So that's what Pampered Chef is at to say, and I almost forgot their dishwasher save. And I know uh, many of you out there will be very appreciative of the fact that they are dishwasher safe. So now that we've talked about that, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the form and the function. That is, how does it look, how does it feel, and how does it work? As we start to talk about the form or how they look, it is important to remember these guys come with a 10-year warranty. And so however you view how they look, just remember that you're going to have that guarantee on top of it. They might not look as great as they look now for 10 years, uh, but they do come with that cool 10-year warranty. I'm going to lift over this one right here. I'm going to use it as kind of our example as we talk about the form of how this guy looks. Now, I don't know how great you can see it in the camera, but it does have this beautiful blue outside to it. And this blue is actually the same nonstick coating that's on the inside. Remember, there's three layers on the inside and two layers of nonstick on the outside. And that means it should be much easier to keep clean. So that blue is absolutely beautiful. They're very comfortable to hold in the hand, uh, which is a good thing to have. They are good and heavy. 
which means you're having that ability to keep your heat where you want it, but they're not so heavy that they become unwieldy. Even this guy right here, the 10 inch pan, I mean, you wanna be able to flip the things that you're using, and so they're heavy as they need to be, but not too heavy, which is really cool. I do like the two and the four quart pots. They have these little spouts on them, which is really nice. I actually make my tea, I make what's called a simple syrup. I learned that that's what it's called. Like this week, I've been doing it forever, where I just put a little bit of water and then I pour it into the remainder of the water and I always had water that just run down the side. And so having these spouts has been just super duper cool as far as I'm concerned. Uh, and both the two quart and the four quart have that. Also, you'll notice on the lids, they have these little drain holes. And so when we're making macaroni and cheese, which we make a lot in this house, I have twin four-year-olds, you don't need to dirty a, a strainer anymore. You can actually just make your, well, we would use the bigger one for this, the four quart, because we make two boxes at a time. But you can actually just leave that in and you can pour it out, which is really cool. Looking at the five quart saute pan, we have a five quart saute pan. We have the Pamper Chef Executive line, which is Uber's years old. We got it from my mom. This one actually has a smaller diameter and this is just affecting me. It may not matter to you, but it's the same amount of volume, but it's a little deeper and the uh, diameter is smaller. And where I hang my pans off over here to the side, that's actually kind of nice to be able to not take up as much space. Now, maybe you would want a bigger diameter from me. That's a really good deal. I will uh, finish this section off by saying that there are a lot of different size options. If you're moving into a house and you have absolutely no pans at all, you're really covering all of your bases, like all the way up to your eight quart stock pot where you're gonna be making your big things of pasta, all the way down to your two quart pan where you're gonna be making ramen noodles and your 10 inch uh, skillet, which is really good for a larger amount of eggs or delicates or fish or things like that. And then the 8.5, which would be really good if you're just making a couple eggs. So uh, all in all, these pans look brilliant. Uh, if that's where they got the name from, then that sticks. Like they are, <laughs> except they don't stick, get it? <laughs> uh, but if that's where they got the name from, that's great. But let's see if they're brilliant in the cooking department. So for as great as a pan might look, at the end of the day, you want a pan that performs, especially for the price that Pamper Chef is asking for this. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the functionality. So this is a pure play non-stick pan. That is its intention. The question you gotta ask is why do you even want a non-stick pan? The simple answer to that is that when you're cooking delicate foods like eggs or fish or shrimp or pancakes or cheesy dishes, uh, you're gonna want something that is non-stick. And so that's why we have non-stick pans. If non-stick is the reason to be buying a pan like this because it's non-stick is uh, how does the non-stick work? Well, Unlike the select line, the Pampered Chef Brilliance line, you cannot use metal on. You can only use plastic utensils on it, but there are three coatings of nonstick paint, if you will, on this guy, and that should allow it to last for a pretty long time. So why would you go with this pan instead of a Select? Well, for one thing is size. The Select doesn't have all of the same size. It has some crossover, but if you're wanting a big eight quart stock pot, you're not gonna get that in the Select. They don't have that. The obvious reason is the price. The Brilliance line is about 20% cheaper than the Select line. So let's go ahead and talk about the functionality. How well does this guy work? Well, one thing that's important to me, even in a nonstick pan, is what I talked about earlier, and that is heat retention and heat distribution. I want something that is going to heat up fast is nice. If it'll heat up fast, that's nice. But I want something that is going to heat up evenly around the whole pan. And I want something that when I drop my cold steak or my eggs into the pan, it's not immediately going to suck all of that heat out. So we did a couple tests to determine how well this guy could do. And the one thing that I wanted to see was, does it heat up evenly? And the way that I tested that is I actually grabbed one of those little no contact thermometers and just turn the pan on the stove and let it go. Set it on low heat and I wanted to see if it would heat up evenly. Now it did heat up pretty fast. Um, and it heated up fairly evenly, but what was surprising to me was that the actual center of the pan where their flame was at, right at the beginning, heated up slower than the side of the pan. Now, I attribute that to the fact that I have a gas stove, and so the flame will come up a little bit 
you know, over the side. The heat spreads out uh, like it wouldn't do if you had an electric stove. And I also think because there is the stainless steel cap and the aluminum disc at the bottom that isn't on the sides is that it took a little bit longer for that heat to penetrate. But you, on the thermometers, as we were running it, the heat really wasn't that off. It did a pretty good job of spreading out the heat and distributing it throughout the pan. So I'm going to give that one a pass for the Pamper Chef Brilliance Pan. It did have a good heat distribution. To test heat retention, uh, what I did is I took this guy right here, which is the two-core pan. I put four cups of water on it. I set it on high heat, and I wanted to see how long boiling water would last. Well, almost boiling water, that is. And so I turned it on high heat. Uh, after five minutes and 50 seconds, we had reached 180 degrees, at which point I turned off the heat, and I had a little thermometer in there, and I just checked every 10 degrees. How long did it take to go every 10 degrees? And this is what I learned. The drop from 180 degrees to 170 degrees took 4 minutes and 30 seconds, and the drop from 170 degrees to 160 degrees took 4 minutes and 1 second, and the drop from 160 degrees to 150 degrees took 3 minutes and 59 seconds. I suspect that that first drop took a little bit longer because the stove still had some residual heat on it. There are grates here that stay hot, and I imagine that had something to do with it. All in all, that's pretty good. I mean, the water still remained pretty warm. The amount of time that it took the temperature to drop was pretty good. So for a matter of heat retention, I'm not going to be afraid to throw my food on there and worry that all of that heat's going to be immediately sucked out. So for heat distribution, yeah, I'm going to say this guy has a pass. For heat retention, yeah, I'm going to say it has a pass. Is it going to be as good as cast iron? No! I mean, a cast iron weighs 100 bajillion pounds and it holds all of that heat in it. Uh, but for a non-stick pan, those are pretty good numbers that I can be proud of. While we're on the topic of heat, you might notice that these guys have metal handles. I imagine this was a little bit cheaper than maybe putting that silicone on there, or maybe they were just thinking warranty-wise. We have the executive line uh, that we've used traditionally, and they have a silicone. And after a lot of years, that silicone starts to get a little bit looser and uh, they have to replace it for us. So I think they went a little bit cheaper on the handle with this stainless steel guy. And yes, it does heat up. It does get hot. Uh, they do sell separately at $10, these little pot holder things that you can put on there so you don't burn your hand. Uh, same thing with the lid. You can hold that on lid. But that's kind of upsetting to me. I know they're trying to make this a little bit more budget friendly, but it is a premium pan. And I would really like something where the handle doesn't heat up, but that's what we got. And yeah, that is a little bit of a downside as far as I can see it. With that, let's go ahead and talk about some of the non-stick properties. When you think non-stick cooking, uh, my mind, and maybe your mind too, probably goes straight to something like eggs. Like nobody cooks eggs in stainless steel. I do cook eggs on my cast iron uh, blackstone, but usually that's the thing we go to with our nonstick pans. I did make some eggs. I tried a couple different things. Normally I would use butter. In this instance, I didn't because I wanted to see, is this stuff going to stick? And surprise, surprise, it didn't. Uh, you know, for as much as they're charging, I think you would expect the nonstick pan to be able to cook eggs. Uh, I made a regular egg. I made it uh, easy over, sunny side up. What's it called where you flip it over? I did that, um, and then I also scrambled the eggs as well. Uh, with the scrambles, it, it didn't stick to the pan, but it did um, brown a little bit. And so anytime you're cooking on high heat, I don't care how good your pan is, if you don't keep stirring the eggs or if your heat's too high or you don't remove it from the heat, Periodically, you're going to get that. All in all, that came off really well. I also cooked fish with it. I was really impressed uh, with the fish. Again, normally I would use butter or oil, but maybe you're trying to be more healthy and you don't want to do that. Uh, so I put the fish in the pan. I would normally use a lid when I'm cooking fish, but A, the 10 inch doesn't have a lid, so I normally cook that in something like my saute pan. But, uh, and so you could see it better, I did cook it without a lid, and so it took a little longer. Uh, one thing that I was surprised by is it browned. Like usually uh, when you're cooking with nonstick, you, you don't really get a nice char on it or a nice browning on it, but it did. It got a nice brown on it and it slid right out of the pan, and again, it tasted really good. And the nice thing about testing all this stuff is I get to eat it, which was good. Um, and finally, I wanted to test just cheese. I mean, cheese is kind of that nasty thing that if you get cheese inside of a stainless steel pan and you go at it, uh, it's not going to be great. So I did take a handful of cheese, threw it in 
the pan and just let it melt and then I let it cool off for a while and it just scraped right out which is really nice. Again, it is a new pan, you expect that with new pans. The nice thing is this does have a 10 year warranty and so if it stops doing that or if it doesn't last, you can say, hey, I paid a lot of money for this and it's not non-stick anymore and they're going to have to replace it for you. So uh, we can believe that it will be non-stick for about 10 years at least, which is good because most non-stick, especially if you buy it like Walmart or you buy lower tier stuff, is only good for three to five years. Uh, we have a tools pan that we've had for a while and we use it because we only have one smaller one and so we use it as well and it's night and day. You can tell the difference between the cheaper one and the more expensive one and the uh, signature that we have in our 8.5 blows it out of the water. So in terms of functionality, the pan does what it's supposed to do. It's a good pan. I would be happy to have it in our kitchen. In fact, I think it's going to replace some of the older stuff that we have in our kitchen. But one thing that we also want to talk about, we talked about that 10 year warranty. How do we feel in regards to durability? How does this guy stack up in that? And that's what we'll talk about next. So as I mentioned, nonstick pans tend to last about three to five years. They're one of the things that when you start to see uh, the peeling inside of your pan, you don't want to keep it. Even though they don't use those PFOAs, you know, this black stuff is not stuff that you want to eat. So as soon as you start to see peeling in a pan that's nonstick, you want to get rid of it. And Pampered Chef is telling us, hey, you're going to get 10 years out of this. And that's really cool. I'm glad to hear that. I did mention that we have a tools of the trade pan and it is not held up. <laughs> like it is not good anymore. It is not nonstick anymore. Or we probably should get rid of it. Obviously, we've only had this thing for a month, so it's kind of hard to say, hey, this is going to stand the test of time, but I do know a couple things about it. The rivet construction is really good. Sometimes you'll see pans that avoid rivets because they can make it easier to clean, but one thing that the rivets bring is they drive the price down a little bit because it's you know cheaper than trying to weld it on there, but they also tend to last a lot longer when you have good rivets. And I'm just looking at these guys, they're thick, like that's a, that's a nice thick rivet. That's not going to break off anytime soon. Pampered Chef has been in the warranty game for a long time. They're not going to want to make something that they're going to have to replace in six months, especially if all of them are breaking. So your handle, I don't think there's a whole lot of concern unless you're like banging it against like your house concrete or something because you're mad. It's not going to go anywhere. It's going to stick and be good in that regard. Same with the nonstick. I can't promise that metal hasn't been used on this. I have teenagers in this house, we have people who visit our house, uh, but I don't think you can see it on camera, but there are some noticeable lines. And I don't wanna say they're necessarily scratches because I wouldn't say that, but it's not that clean, smooth when it was brand new. And after having it for a month, I would think that it would still look brand new. Again, I can't promise metal hasn't been used on it, but that's just kind of a, I would have liked to have seen it play out a little bit better in that regard. I can also speak to the aluminum core on this that is that hard adenized steel or the hard adenized that I, aluminum that I talked about that's two times stronger than steel. That's actually what the old executive nonstick pans are made out of. And we've had those for like, well, longer than I've been married, longer than six years, I've probably over a decade we've had that, and they really have stood up the test of time. So again, even though I haven't had this for 10 years, knowing that that's the aluminum that's in here is that hard adenized steel, or the, I keep calling it steel because it's stronger than steel, that hard adenized aluminum gives me a lot of confidence that I'm not gonna have to worry about this guy breaking. So the handle, solid rivet, the nonstick coating, three layers on the inside, probably not going to chip much. The hard adenized steel, this guy's going to be pretty durable. Uh, time will tell, but that's what I feel just in the short time that I have been able to use it. So the final question we need to ask is, is this a good deal? Is it worth it? And so for that, I'm going to use the 10 inch pan as our comparison here. This guy comes in at $95. On the premium side of things, if you look at Food Network, the best pan that they say is out there is the Made in 10 Inch Nonstick Skillet. And that pan will come in at $105, so it's $10 more expensive than this. And the best I could find on their warranty is 45 days. I don't know if that's true. Feel free to correct me in the comments if that's wrong. But I did some digging and it basically says you have 45 days. Obviously, this has a 10 year warranty. I've said that a few times. 
The best value that Food Network points to is the Tramantina, uh, which is a pan that is made in Brazil. It's sold on Amazon right now for about $45. Uh, it is an aluminum pan, whereas this has that hard anodized aluminum on the inside. And uh, it is not dishwasher safe, where this one is, and it is not induction safe, which this one is. And so you can see those pans kind of there as your comparison. If you're looking at side by side, you have the 105 at the Made In, which Food Network says is the best, and then you have the Tramantina, which they say is the best value for 40. Um, and this one is coming in at $95 for the sake of comparison. I will say that the signature line for Pampered Chef, they do have a 10-inch skillet just like this, and that one's going to come in at $120, so you're paying a 20% premium, but it also does come with a lifetime warranty, and it also has that removable handles, which are really convenient. So looking at the comparison, I think this stacks up about where it should be when you gauge the warranty, when you gauge the dishwasher safe, the features that this one has that maybe the Tom Martina doesn't. I will say that all of them are not made in China. None of them are made in China, which makes my heart happy. Um, this one is going to be made in Thailand. The Made In is made in Italy, and the Tramatina is made in Brazil. So if you buy that one, you're supporting my uh, wife's home country's economy. So I'm okay with that too, but it is it does make me kind of happy that they're not made in China. If you are to buy the signature of Pampered Chef, those ones are going to be made in Germany, which is pretty cool. So let's talk about it. Is it worth it? Let's talk about the good, the bad, maybe some of the ugly. I don't really think there is ugly. The good, heat retention, pretty good on this. The nonstick coating, three layers on the inside, plus the cleanup aspect of it on the outside is really nice. It is dishwasher safe. It is induction friendly. All of those are wonderful things. It can go in the oven. All of the goods that you would see in a nonstick pan, this guy checks the boxes, which is nice. It also has that strong, heavy build, which kind of goes hand in hand with the fact that it has a 10 year warranty. So now that we've talked about the good, let's talk about the bad. I think one of the biggest detractors is the fact that I need this little guy uh, if I'm going to be doing anything for any length of time. Now, if I'm just cooking eggs and I'm removing it from the heat and doing stuff like that, the handle doesn't get that hot. But if it's sitting on the stove for a while, I'm going to need this. And that kind of makes me sad. It, I, the way to look at it is that it adds $10 to the price tag of the pan if you want to buy a set of these. That is a pretty big detractor for me. Uh, also, the fact that it appears that there's little scratches on the inside, again, I can't say that metal wasn't used. I, it still works perfectly fine. In fact, you can barely see them. I mean, I am being super, super picky, but I just wish it would have uh, lasted, been prettier for a little longer. It is a beautiful pan. I don't know if I said that in the good, but it is a beautiful pan. I wish it would have been a little prettier, a little longer. Obviously, the biggest bad that I'm going to say about this being in a budget-friendly home is that it is expensive. I listed those prices earlier. They'll also be in the description below if you don't want to go back and look at the prices, but these pans are not cheap. Even if you buy the set, uh, the five-piece set, you might get a little, a little discount on that, but I'm not a fan of buying sets. Maybe you are, but they always skip the 10-inch pan, which is the most useful pan. They don't have the big pan, and so you're getting an 8-inch pan, a small pot, and a saute pan, and that's just not preferable for me. Like, that's not what I want. I want the bigger pans, and so I piecemeal mine out, and that means I'm paying full price for all of them. So the price is the biggest detractor. The truth is, I don't know any high-end Pampered Chef items that I would be willing to pay full price for, and I think that's by design. These are the types of things they use to get you to host a party. These are the types of things they do use to get you in the door so you can shoot for your discount, you can get your 50% off, or you can get your 60% off, uh, or um, sometimes they have them on sale. While there are a lot of things that Pampered Chef that are a decent value at their full price, the pots and pans aren't one of them. I would probably never, actually I will just say this confidently, I would never pay full price for any of their high-end items. Thing is, you don't have to. If you want these, if this is a goal, if this is something that you would like to see in your kitchen, yeah, go host a party or wait until they're on sale or do something like that so you can get a discount on them because I would not pay $195 for this pan. So as for us, yes, uh, we are going to be keeping a lot of these. We'll be using them to replace some of our 
uh, older executive lines, particularly the 8-quart pot, we're excited to have because our other one doesn't have a good lid to it. And so we're excited to be able to use that. Well, I also like the 5-quart saute pan because it has a narrower diameter. These are good pans. They're solid pans. They're worth it at 60% off, and we will be keeping some of them. Uh, whether you want them or not, that's entirely up to you. Hey, I hope you guys found this information useful. If you like this kind of content, make sure you like and subscribe to our channel. Drop a comment down below about what you think, uh, whether these pans are worth it or whether I'm just blowing smoke. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.